if you really if you if you really like your Enceladus water, then you you go right. You go and go live there. on Jupiter. Yeah. Oh man, that sounds like a long way. It is a long way. You've seen two thousand one Space Odyssey, right? Yeah, but I've also seen that other thing that's going on Jupiter, and it's fucking taking like ten years to get there. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> in two thousand and one, they go to Jupiter. That's where the the, the yeah, big moon rise happens, or the Jupiter rising. Yeah, um, and then the big lineups, the massive trip scene. Yeah, it's, great. it's like the astronauts done about five tabs of LSD. Yeah, I I don't think I've really watched that with the original soundtrack yet. I've only watched it with um with the Floyd. Oh, really? That's mm. that would be perfect. Probably better with the Floyd. I don't know if yeah, you must have seen it before. Yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah, it's incredible. It's got a great soundtrack, 2001. It does. The All the classical music, mm. which I'm not a huge fan of, but it's generally, but the way it's used, it's just so, they're so, they're, some of the scenes are so iconic. Oh, yeah. Great movie. Great special effects for something done in 68. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it's wild, isn't it? Fantastic. But, he, you know, <clears throat> that's what happens when you help fake moon, the moon landings, you know. You get all this cool shit. You make great movies. Um, Kubrick. R.I.P. What's what's the deal with the cosmic egg? You know, the astronaut, at the end, you may remember there's this there's these yeah, scenes it's a big where. Yeah, inside space with a baby in it. Yeah, but to, before that, the, he, the astronaut goes mm. through. Mm the like fucking wormhole or whatever. He has his big trip, right? 20 yep. minutes of colours and flashing lights. And then he ends up in this neoclassical bedroom. Yes, a crazy scene. And well, I think he's meant to live out the rest of his days. Yeah, but every time he looks across the room, he sees mm. an older version of himself mm. and the younger version of himself will then disappear and then... Mm. The older version will see another older version of himself. Yes. And eventually he's just laying in the bed. Mm. He's this old man laying in the bed, um, completely useless. Yes. And he's looking at the obelisk thing. Obelisk thing. That's right. Mm. That weird black thing. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, Mm. he's, well, I don't know if it's him or not, but there's this big cosmic egg circling in orbit around the planet. Mm. circling the planet what is is it him or is it what's that saying i have no idea is the short answer to that it probably would have been analyzed to death by shit loads of people um sure it could be him it could be him yeah it's because the whole the whole concept of that obelisk thing or whatever whatever it's called is that it sort of sparks human um development right yes and it might be doing that multiple times and if he he's still got it kicking around with him in his hotel room or whatever the, wherever the hell he is at the end game <laughs> he's still got it so there's something going on there for sure there's only really a couple of main scenes in that movie you've got yeah the 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 apes at the beginning who seem to be worried about this other tribe of apes. And as you say, they they come across this obelisk or one day they just wake up and the obelisk is there. I'm not really mm. sure what happens. And they have this breakthrough moment of mm. using a bone as a weapon, like a big femur of a dead animal. Yeah, and the, they go and club them. They go club the other tribe, club them away. Mm. Oh, yes, I do. That, I would love to talk to Kubrick. I'd love to. I'd love he's to. Dead. I know. I, that's why I'd love to talk to him if I could. But no, nah, he's too can't. dead. He's so a little dead. bit too dead. How did he die again? Um, I don't know how he died, but I know when he died. He died like uh, 90s? just before just before Eyes Wide Shut came out. Yeah, that was early nineties, wasn't it? Maybe mid nineties, mm, late nineties. Yeah, late nineties. Yeah, ninety nine. Ninety nine, okay. Yeah, because it, I I can't recall if he died in unusual circumstances, but I mean, I think well, it was I'm just pretty a- sure there's a story that goes that um, he was still 
the the movie was being like uh, approved by the studio. Yeah. And he died in between it. Like he had they cut bits from the movie. They cut bits from Eyes Wide Shut and released it. Mm, okay. That's the story. I'd love to see the movie as he made it. Can you get that? No. Uncut. No, you, you cannot. cannot. No, you cannot. Okay, I'll read this off his Wikipedia. On March 7th, 1999, six days, uh, six days after screening a final cut of Eyes Wide Shut for his family and stars, Kubrick died in his sleep at the age of 70, suffering a heart attack. His funeral was held five days later with only close friends and family in attendance, totaling about 100 people. The media were kept a mile away outside the entrance gate. Uh, someone who attended the funeral described it as a family farewell, almost like an English picnic with cellists, clarinets, clarinetists, Jesus, and singers providing song and music from many of his favorite classical compositions. Blah, 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 blah. Um, he was buried next to his favorite tree on the estate. In a book dedicated to Kubrick, his wife, Christiane, included one of his favorite quotations of Oscar Wilde. The tragedy of old age is not that one is old, but that one is young. I don't know what that means. I was about to say, that I don't know what that means. The tragedy of old age is not that one is old, but that one is young. I don't know what that means. But good on you, Kirby. Uh, no, no mention there of a final cut of Eyes Wide Shut or anything in there. So could be bullshit. Could yeah. be, or it could be just um, forbidden information. 